Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. The next problem is going to be the next problem is going to be electronics shop. Monica wants to buy a keyboard and a USB drive from her favorite electronics store. The store has several models of which Monica wants to spend as much as possible for the two items given her budget. Given the price list for the store's keyboards and USB drives and Monica's budget, find and print the amount of money Monica will spend. If she doesn't have enough money to both a keyboard and USB drive, print minus one instead. She will buy only the two required items. For example, suppose she has a budget of 60 to spend. Three types of keyboards cost 40, 50 and 60. Two USB drives cost uh, 5, 8 and 12. She could purchase a 40 keyboard plus 12 drive, which is 42 in total, or 50 keyboard plus 8 drive, which is 58 in total. She chooses the later. She can't buy more than two items, so she can't spend on the 60. All right, let's take a look at the input format. The first line contains three space separated integers B, N, and M, uh, her budget, the number of keyboards, and number of USB drives. Second line contains N space separated uh, integers, keyboards, and the third line contains M space separated integers, drives. So so, the first thing that we'll have to do, I think, we need to find all of the possible combination of pairs of keyboards and drives. So let's bring some input data to our shell. First line contains keyboards, so this is our going to be our keyboards. And drives. How to find all of the possible combination of pairs of these two? The easiest way I see is to probably use something like list comprehension. So we iterate through all of the keyboards and through all of the drives and we just generate all of the possible pairs of them. Something like that. But I'm going to show you a really interesting trick that you can use to find and reuse existing functions. So let's think of what function we need to generate all of the possible pairs. We need some kind of function that takes a list of one type, a list of another type, and just combines them together. So list is actually a kind of a generic type. It's parameterized by the type of its element. So what if we abstract it out? What if we do something like that? So instead of using uh, brackets, we're going to use this type. So some kind of an abstract uh, generic type, which is also parameterized by this type. So now we have a function that takes two containers and produces this container. But it does not necessarily have to combine them into pairs. It can combine them into anything if you have function that takes A and B and squashes them to C. So we need to find something like that. So let's actually open a website called haskell.org slash hoogle, which is a very interesting service that allows you to search Haskell API by its signatures. And let's just put that signature there and see what we can find. And this is first thing that we found, lift M2. It has exactly the signature that we want to produce Cartesian product. But what's interesting, instead of lists, it uses something called monad. And what is a monad and how we can use it is completely irrelevant for the discussion. The only thing that is important is that list is a monad. And so that means that particular function can be used on lists. To enable that particular function, to enable that particular function, we need to import control monad and we will be able to actually use it. Since we need to pack the elements of pairs into tuples, we're going to use this as a function. So if you take a look at the signature of this particular operation, it's a function that takes two elements and returns a pair of these two things. You can even double check check that it works. So you can construct pairs like that or like that. So it doesn't matter how we do that. But uh, what's cool about comma is that then you can use it as a function and pass it to other functions. So we pass it comma here, indicating how we want to pack our pairs. Then we provide keyboards and then we provide drives. Yeah, and we already lost all of them because we reloaded the repo. Okay, let's find all of these things and recreate them. 
I think the easiest way would be to actually put them into the file so every time I reload the module they are always there. I think it's going to be a way easier to work with. Okay, and let's uh, try to apply lift M2 to them. Keyboards and drives. And as you can see, it also generates all of the possible pairs. So this is how quite easily using services like Google, you can find code in standard library or in third party libraries that you can reuse in your Husky programs, which is which is kind of nice, which is kind of nice. And we found a way to actually produce a Cartesian product onto lists if we treat lists as monads, which they are. Hopefully, this is how we generate the pairs. But what's interesting is that we don't really care about them being pairs. We only care about their total price. So instead of packing them into tuples, why not just sum them up? And this is the sums of all of the combinations of keyboards and drives. Next, we want to filter everything that goes over the budget. So basically, those are lists of all possible amount of money that Monica can pay for drive and keyboard. So we want to filter out everything that goes over her budget. So let's actually put budget into file here. So it will be available in repo. I think the test budget is 10. So let's filter everything that less or equal to the budget. And yeah, we filtered out things like 11 because it's obviously over the budget because the budget was 10. Once we have everything that fits into the budget, we want to find the maximum. Obvious thing in that situation would be just throw a maximum function here uh, which is nine but here lies the problem what if nothing fits into the budget what if your budget is actually one filter will generate an empty list and what happens when you apply maximum to empty list we get an error but in this situation instead of like throwing an arrow we actually have to print minus one according to the description so how to do that instead of just throwing blindly maximum to this solution i want to sort everything in a descending order I cannot because I didn't have sort by because it's located in data list module. Let's quickly import it. And I don't have a function flip, but I have flip. So you see, when you sort this result in a descending order, the answer is going to be the first element. But if after the filter you get an empty list, it's not going to throw an error. It will just return an empty list, which simplifies handling this situation. But again, you cannot just easily head uh, the result of sorting because in case of empty list, you again going to get an error. So to handle that situation, we're going to use an statistic function called list to maybe, which is located in data maybe module. It takes a list and returns a maybe of A. So let's take a look at how it works. If you convert an empty list to maybe, you get nothing. But if you convert an actual list with several elements, it takes the first element of that list and wraps it into just. And this is exactly what we need. So instead of taking a head, we're gonna do list to maybe. And now when there's nothing that fits the budget, we get nothing. And when we have an actual solution, we get just that solution. And it only remains to unwrap maybe. To unwrap that maybe, we're gonna use from maybe function, which takes the default value maybe and unwraps it. And in case of nothing, it returns the default value. Let me show you from maybe five, nothing will return five just six returns six that enables us with using from maybe and in case of nothing according to the requirements we have to return minus one so it's nine when it fits the budget and it's minus one when it doesn't fit the budget and guess what this is the final entire solution of this problem fits nicely into a single line so let's actually try to wrap it into a function the function is going to be solve which takes the budget, takes the prices of the keyboards, the prices of the drives, and returns the answer. Budget, keyboards, drives. And let's just copy paste it right here. Let's format it nicely so it looks a little bit better and remove this taste data that we don't need anymore. So now we have a boil solution. But 
again, this is just a solution. This is just a pure function. We need to make it an interactive program. The input format of this particular program is a little bit complicated. So we're going to use our usual get list trick to parse the input line by line. So this time I want to use uh, some functor notation where I treat the result of get line as a functor and f map it with words and map read. And now let's implement the main function. So on the first line of the input, we get B, N, and M. And what's interesting is that keyboards and drives are fully located on their separate lines, which makes it possible for us to parse them without knowing N and M. So we don't need these two things. And once we have all of the input data, we can just uh, solve it. Solve as far as they can remember returns integer, that means we'll have to convert it to a string. And once it's converted to a string, we print it to the standard output. So this thing compiles and let's try to submit that. Let's try to submit that. Let's put it here. Let's see if it compiles on their side. It compiles and let's submit that as usual and see what will happen and see what will happen. And yeah, it works. Next problem. <laughs> <laughs> 